coming in with them, I, I said, well, you know what? Winter is here. I said, yeah, here, yeah, y'all don't need this. I said, the only thing that can make it better is if we had some snow. He goes, you're no friend of mine. <laughs> so I lost a friend today because of snow. <laughs> but, um, and I know that some of you don't want snow. I get it. Just send yours over to my house. And I'll take it and let me be snowed in for a day or two, and then I'll get out and, and run around. But, but white is snow. And we're going to look at that, um, at that, that theme and that title through, from now through December. And we're going to see that Jesus came for us. You know, it's real easy in this time of year to get caught up in all of the questions that we have. Is Walmart still open? When are they open? i got to go get that gift. What about Target? Will, will Target have, I've looked at every other store, will Target have this, this one store? Okay, i got to order it off of Amazon. What, what's the shipping? Will it be here? Will it be here on time? Oh, i got one day prime. I get it. I get it. See, we, we, we think about all of these things at Christmas, and who do I need to get a gift for, and what's their size, and will they like this, or will they not like it? What's the new gift that's out there? And if you've got kids, and if you're like me, you want to make sure they get something that they want. I remember it must have been Rachel's like third Christmas, and Walmart used to stay open 24 hours, and I don't know if it was right Christmas Eve or something like that. And and we need. And she said, "I want a fire truck. <laughs> fire truck. I want a fire truck. Okay." So here it is later in the evening, and I'm running out going to Walmart to see if we can find the fire truck for this girl who wants a fire truck. So we got it. And about two days later, I think it was forgotten. Because that was the whim at the time, a fire truck. And we, but we always want to make sure we, we get the right gift. So all of these questions are going through our, our mind and, and our head. And, and you know, we got to understand that there's something more to this season. Yes, we want to give gifts, but we've been given a gift. Yeah, we want to make sure that, that our, our relatives and our friends, they know that we love them, but we got to understand that we're loved. Jesus came for us. Jesus came because, and this is where we're going to go today, because of sin. When you were born, you had sin. When you were born, you were shaped in iniquity. Jesus came so as this title would say that we could be white as snow. We need Jesus. And that's who we're celebrating. And that's who we're looking at over the next five weeks as we head into, into Christmas. And I hope you understand that I'm not really doing anything new. I've always been talking about Jesus. I'm just doing it from the perspective of Christmas and how he makes us white as snow. Let's pray. Father, I want to thank you for your love to us. Thank you for your goodness and Lord, we can look into your word. Lord, we ask that today that it will speak to our heart, that it will continue, Lord, to just change our lives. And Lord, we ask that today that, Lord, you, you will bless our country and our nation. Lord, as we've come out of Thanksgiving, we're going to Christmas, and Lord, it's easy to get caught up in all this stuff, but Lord, that we will look to you, that, Lord, you will touch our leaders, Lord, you will touch, Lord, them and give them wisdom, and let, Lord, let them choose to receive your wisdom and take your wisdom. Lord, we pray today for the peace of Jerusalem, that, Lord, you will touch your people, you will protect your people, and that, Lord, you will guide them. And we pray, Lord, for Christians today that are being abused and persecuted and, Lord, going through terrible hardships. Lord, we pray, Lord, your peace upon them and, Lord, your, your love. And, Lord, just let them feel and sense your presence in a special way today. And in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Now, so today's title is Sins as Scarlet. Sins as Scarlet. In Isaiah chapter 1, verse 4, it says this. Alas, sinful nation, a people laden with iniquity, a brood of evil doers, children who are corruptors. They have forsaken the Lord. They have provoked to anger the Holy One of Israel. They have turned away backwards. So God is speaking through the mouth of, of Isaiah to pronounce judgment and condemnation on the people of Israel. He calls them sinful 
people who are bent over by the weight of their sin or their guilt. He called them an entire group of evildoers given the lives of corruption who have forsaken their God, spurned Him, and turned their backs on Him. And now, think about it. That's all just that one verse. God is, God is saying a lot about His people. He's saying a lot about what's, what's going on in the nation and what is, what is happening. And I think if we're not careful, we can look all around us in our homes, our communities, and across our country and say, you know what? It seems as if we have a nation of evildoers. It seems as like there's corruptness all around us. And, and we talk about it and we, and we bemoan it and, and we get discouraged by it. And if we're not careful, we let it overwhelm us. But we've got a God who sees and a God who cares. As hard as it is to hear God speak of his people like that, it's even harder to acknowledge it's true. God's people turned their back on him. They, they hired themselves, they, they buried themselves beneath lives of sin. And God is speaking to them to bring them out. We have Christ. Yeah, but you know what? It's, it's very easy to see ourselves in that scripture if we're not careful. See, Romans 3, 23, 22 to 23 tells us this. For there is no difference for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. We're sinful by nature. We're sinful at birth. Someone once said that you're born with enough sin to send you to hell. If you do nothing, You'll go to hell because of the sin that you're born with. That verse there says, For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God means we forfeited the glory. We gave it up through the sin. And what happened with Adam and Eve, it was given up. And then in Galatians chapter 3, 22, it tells us this. But the scripture has confined all under sin, that the promise by faith in Jesus Christ might be given to those who believe. The scripture tells us that we're all under sin. There's none righteous. There's none that are good. There's none that have hope within themselves. Our only hope is in Jesus, because that's what it says, that the promise by faith in Jesus Christ might be given to those who believe. So yeah, we painted a bad picture, and that scripture out of Isaiah painted a bad picture for God's people. They were sinful, and, then, and it seemed like they just wanted to be sinful, and they, were, and they were chasing after sin, and if we're not careful, we look around us, and that's can be who we are and who this, uh, this world is. But Jesus came to give us hope. That's what the scripture says, that the promise by faith in Jesus Christ might be given to who? Those who believe. See, that's the key. We've got to believe. We've got to believe that Jesus is our answer. And then if we skip down to verse 18 in that Isaiah chapter 1, it says this, Come now. And let us reason together, says the Lord. Though your sins are like scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. Though they are red like crimson, they shall be as wool. So sins like scarlet. If we break this down, first and foremost, everyone has sinned. Can you... Can you say yes to that? I don't want you to say amen. Just say yes. Yeah. Yes, okay? Don't say amen. Amen means I agree and I'll, I'll receive that. No, no, just we have, we've all sinned. And because of that, we have sins that are like scarlet. See, Isaiah illustrates that bright and permanent stain of sin. It's in Isaiah 53, verse 6, it says, all we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned everyone to his own way, and the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. So what's happened? Jesus had the iniquity, the sin of all of us laid on him. We all have sinned. Psalms 51, 5 says, Surely I was sinful at birth, sinful from the time my mother conceived me. Man, it just, it just keeps getting better. Our sin was laid on Jesus, and we were all sinful at birth. Sins like scarlet. What a pretty picture it is. Man, it's, we got no hope without Jesus. Sins as scarlet. See, in the ancient world, 
when they, uh, the color scarlet was a bright red. It was achieved through a dye, and dyed material could not be changed. I know I, I was, have ordered some basketball uniforms, and I was, was talking to Rob, and we're talking about you can get it screened on, you can get something sewed on, you used to call that tackle twill, I think. But now they do a process called sublimation. Where they take the material, and as they're doing the material, they put the dye or the ink into the material so it, it holds better, it doesn't fade. And the material now they make for uniforms, it's, it's so thin, I, I, I tell the girls, make sure you wear something underneath. Okay, especially with the white uniform. It's just, it's just, but it's so thin because they can put the dye in the material. And in the ancient world, when they died with this dye, it was in there. There was nothing you could do to get it out. So when it says sins like scarlet, it was this bright red dye that was in it. And once it was there, it was there. There was nothing you could do. And so when he says sins like scarlet, what it's painted a picture of is that our sin is there, that we are tainted, and there's nothing we can do to get rid of it. We're permanently stained. That scarlet red. That's what happens with sin. When Adam and Eve sinned in the garden, that sin has been transferred down through us all at, at, at birth, at conception. Sin is transferred. And we need a Savior. He says your sins are like scarlet, but what's going to happen? They're going to be white as snow. There can be no, almost no different color than from that bright red to that white, almost blinding white. Now, and I'm not talking about the 45 different shades of white that you can find at, at Walmart, or no, man, excuse me, at Lowe's when you go there, or Home Depot, or Benjamin Moore. I've, my wife and I, we've had this discussion that, that men see about like eight or nine colors of green, or it's blue, or it's red, or it's white, or it's black, brown. But, but for women, you can see shades of colors. And we'll look at something. I'll say with that screen, she goes, no, that's blue. No, 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 no. That is green. No, it's blue, Philip. It doesn't match with those clothes. You can't wear it. <laughs> so, but we're not talking about the shades. We're talking about the, the, the bright red. And we're looking at the bright white. He said, though your sins are like scarlet, they shall be white as no. In the ancient world, they would not have known how to take that scarlet red and get rid of it and make it white. But I want you here to tell you today that nothing is impossible with God. See, Jesus came to make the impossible possible. He came to make us who were sinful and scarlet red, white as snow and pure and holy and righteous before God because of what Jesus has done. See, when the angel came to, when the Gabriel came to Mary, this is what he said in Luke chapter 1, verse 37. For with God, nothing will be impossible. Mary couldn't understand, how can I have a child? How can I have a child? I'm just young. I'm a virgin. I can't have a child. I don't have a husband. I don't know a man. But the angel said, nothing will be impossible with God. See, even though we're red, and stained because of sin. Nothing is impossible with God. The miraculous nature of God is for us, but it, it seems to be commonplace. It seems to be commonplace so many times in the scripture and, for, and, and from heaven we see that God works miracles. See, in, in Matthew chapter 6, verse 10, it says that his kingdom come, his will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And shouldn't we expect the miraculous would become commonplace here as well. Shouldn't we believe that God can do anything and everything, no matter what the world says? See, there are times that you've gone through stuff, you've done things, and people would say you're hopeless and you're lost. There's no coming back from that. But God says nothing will be impossible. Even though we're born in sin, we can become white as snow. That's what Isaiah was saying. Though your sins are like scarlet, they should be white as snow. Though they are red as crimson, they shall be like wool. Like wool, the white wool that you see on sheep and 
I know we were getting ready to put some like white wool almost here around the flowers and said, you know, we're just going to forget it. We're just not going to have it there. But the white, he wants to take and make the, 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 the perfect person that we think has the most sin white with snow. You know, we, we like to put levels of sin. Well, that person's really bad. They've done this. This one's even worse because they've done that. You know what? That was just a little white line. We like to put categories of sin, white lies, just little sin. You know what? If, if it doesn't hurt anybody, it's okay. If nobody finds out, I got by. I want you to understand, sin is sin, and sin is like scarlet. We need, we need to be, have it washed white as snow, and Jesus is the only one that can do that. He can turn the scarlet in the snow, and because of that, we can trust in him. See, Isaiah 51, verse 7 says this, Purge me with hyssop, and I shall be clean. Wash me, and I shall be whiter than snow. We've all got a past, right? We've all done stuff we're not proud of. Now, I've said this before. I'm glad Facebook wasn't around back in the day. See, now with Facebook... People do things and they, they put it up there and it's like, oh my gosh. And then what happens, people spread it. And then everybody's got a camera. And if something's happening, they immediately got to take a picture of it. I went to a basketball scrimmage this past week and was talking to someone and said, oh, you should have been in our last scrimmage. There were three women that went outside and got into it. And said, you know what? We got it on the big cameras from the school. We saw it all. Said, but we knew that somebody else had taken up a closer picture. And they found somebody that had it right up close. And you could hear every word. Just think if your life was like that. Out on the, out on the camera and social media. That's why it's important to tell your kids, put your phone away. You don't have to film everything. Not everybody wants to know what you had for breakfast or what's going on. Okay? But we all have a past. We've all got sin. We've all got things. That, that have happened, but here's the, here's the problem. We think if we just take care of that and we don't do those things anymore, that we're okay. But here we've got sin that we've got to deal with that comes from the fact that we're human and that we were born. If you never messed up your whole life, you would still have sin. And we need to be, be made white as snow. No. We need to have that sin washed away. We need to have that sin cleansed. And the only one who can do that is Jesus. Why did, why did Jesus come? To give us a nice time to give gifts? No. Just to give us a time to put up Christmas trees and have poinsettias and do have parties? No. Jesus came because there was sin. Jesus came to solve and be the answer to our sin problem. That's why he can say, though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. We need a Savior. You need a savior. I need a savior. It's not your neighbor that needs a savior. He may, she may. It's not just your family member or your enemy that needs a savior. You need a savior. We all need a savior. See, at this time of year, we can be filled with lots of doubts. We doubt that really, at times, that God loves us. Anybody ever doubted that does God really love me? Does God really? Care, can I ever be really good enough for him? Is his grace really going to be sufficient? And if we if we the list goes on and on, and we have a hard time believing that despite what I've done, God still loves me, he still cares, and his grace is still sufficient. There are those who believe that they've gone too far. There have been times, I believe, that a lot of us have said they've, somebody has gone too far. They're irredeemable. There's no hope. And what he's saying, I came because of sin. And if it's a sin problem, I'll take care of it. Though their sins be as scarlet, they'll be white as snow. For those of you that are here today, you may have doubts. I want to be the first to tell you that you're in good company. If you look throughout the Christmas story, when the angel Gabriel was telling Mary about how she would give birth to Jesus, she said, how can this be? 
How can this be? When God commissioned Moses to bring the Israelites out of Egypt, he responded by saying, Who am I that I should go to Pharaoh and that I should bring the people out of Egypt? He said, I can't go. He gave excuses. I can't speak very well. Well, there's, there's your brother Aaron. Take him with you. Well, who am I going to say sent me? Just tell him I am. Really? Now, what, what, I mean, all, all these doubts. Maybe if you've asked questions like that before, how can this be? Or hey, who am I? Maybe if you, you've asked other questions like, how can God love me? Or where were you when I needed you? We talked about this a couple weeks ago. Kind of like Mary and Martha, Lord, if you had been here, this wouldn't have happened. See, we're full of doubt. We're full of questions because of the sin and what's happened. We, 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 we look at ourselves and say, you know what? It can't be possible. But Jesus has come and he has said from the very beginning, I came because of you. I came because of your sin. I came to be Savior, to be the Messiah, to be the Redeemer, to be the one who would die on the cross for you and, and give you hope. But still it seems like we question it and we doubt it. We don't have to do that. See, in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 21, it's for, he says, For he made him who knew no sin to be sin for us, that we might become the righteousness of God in him. See, he came to take all of the sin. And scripture says there, he, he, he made him who knew no sin to be Sin. He took the iniquity of the whole world. Now you got to understand, it wasn't just of the world of people that were alive today. It was from the past, the present, and the future. Every sin was laid upon him. Why? So that we could become the righteousness of God. See, that's the only way that our sins that were like scarlet could become white as snow is that someone else took them the perfect sacrifice took them and he gave us in exchange his righteousness. That was our only hope. We needed a Savior. And Jesus came. See, if you go back to that Isaiah chapter 1, that verse 18, when it says this, Come now and let us reason together, says the Lord. Now, that doesn't mean you're going to talk your way out of your sin. Well, God, come on now. That's not as bad as somebody else. Come on. You can get me get by with Don't we try? Every we tried that from the very earliest day. Well, Mom, Dad, I didn't do what they did. So I'm better than them. So don't punish me because I didn't go that far. I stopped just short of that. I didn't do it. Yes, they threw rocks through the window, but I just gave it to them. I didn't throw them. I didn't do all of that. No. That wasn't me. I remember when I was growing up, Dad, I didn't shoot the BB gun through the window. I just shot at his feet. We both got a spanking. We were both shooting at the wrong thing. But see, we like to reason our sin. And that's not what he's talking about here. See, when he says, come now, let us reason together, the Lord is saying through Isaiah, let us reason together about the enormity of sin and the rebellion in your life. Let us reasonably discuss your sin and the consequences of that sin. And then God completely flipped that script and said, throw the white scarlet, I'll wash you white as snow. See, if we reason together, yes, I deserve punishment. If we reason together, I deserve that weight of sin and the punishment and the death that comes because of because the wages of sin is what? Death. But what does he do? He says, you know what? Though they were like scarlet, I'm going to make them like white as snow. I'm going to take the problem you got, and I'm going to give you my righteousness. I'm going to change it all. You see, the story of Christmas is not about just the manger, and we and we celebrate that, and we'll do what we'll do with the live nativity, and what will we have? The manger, and we'll. We'll, do, we'll, we'll celebrate the birth and we'll give gifts and we'll, at the Christmas program, we'll have the wise men and, and we'll talk about it. And, and, and that's, that's all about Christmas. But if that's all we get out of Christmas, if we miss the point, 
Jesus came to live and to die and to become sin for us that we can become the righteousness of God and have the hope of eternal life and know him as our Savior and have our sin problem taken away. That's what we need. We've got a sin problem if we're, when we're born. And we need a Savior. See, Revelation chapter 7, verse 14 says this. And I said to him, Sir, you know. So he said to me, These are the ones who came out of the great tribulation and washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. See, it's the blood of Jesus that makes us white as snow. It's his blood that he shed on the cross and that we celebrate every week through communion that lets us know that we can be washed as white as snow because of the blood. And here's, the, here's the, the special thing about that blood. When you get saved, your sin problem is dealt with. It's washed away. And what you say, well, Pastor, what happens if I get up the next day and I sin again? The blood washes it away, and it's covered it. It's washed it all away. See, here's the thing that we got to understand. We don't go to hell because of the sins that we commit when we live this life. We're born with sin that separates us from God. And what we do in this life is because that is our nature to sin. So the things that I do are because of my sin nature. Jesus came because of what I was born with, the sin that I have. And what it does, it covers all of those things that I've done, all of those things that I do, and he continues to declare me to be the righteousness of God. Because you know what? As I live this life, and you're just the same, you're going to get up tomorrow and you're going to try to do the best you can. And you know what? There's going to be a day that you fail in your sin. You're going to say the wrong thing. You're going to think the wrong thought. You're going to look at the wrong thing. You're going to do something that's a sin. And here's what he does. He said, I declare you to be the righteousness of God. Now, that's not who you are. I've washed that away. I've taken your sin. You don't have to be like that. You can live righteous. You can live holy. But you can't do it within yourself. You do it within Jesus. And the leading of the Holy Spirit. You can't do it. You can't handle your sin problem at any level. You need someone to come and make you white as snow. You need someone that says, I'm going to give you the, the gift of grace. And see, because you know you're righteous, you can live righteous. Some people are trying to live righteous and they still got sin. They still got the problem, the root of unrighteousness. But what happens? He gives us the gift of righteousness. We don't earn it. We can't make it. We can't create it. He died on the cross so that we could become white as snow. Yes, our sins are scarlet. They're embedded. We can't wash them away, but what Jesus comes and does, he makes you white as snow, as snow, as white as wool, and you're holy, and you're clean, and he declares you to be his child. So as we go through the rest of the series, we're going to look at what he's done and when, how and how this happens, and, and what, what goes on, and we're going to see how that because of him we have hope. Next week, if you go to the next slide, Angelica, next week we're going to be looking at God with us. See, if you look at all these other religions, they're trying to get to God. You know what Jesus did? He came to us. We can't get to him. You can't go through seven steps and get to him. You can't do the seven tenets. You can't follow all of these 14 spiritual laws and all of that to get to God. God came to you. And because of that, we have a relationship with him. And because of that, we can know that our sin problem is dealt with. But it's only dealt with through a relationship with Jesus Christ. So listen, as you go through this, this holiday season, don't see him as just the baby in the manger. He came as a baby. You know, he was 100% baby. But he was still 100% God. He came to live, to experience what we go through so that he could be the sacrifice that we needed so that we could become the children of God. God became man so that we could become children of God. The Bible talks about, the, we talk about the great exchange, how he took our sin and he gave us righteousness. He did that for us. So though your sins are scarlet, you shall be white as snow. And the only way that happens is through the blood of Jesus. He washes you clean.
Would you bow your head? Father, we want to thank you that because of what Jesus has done, we can know that our sin is gone. And Lord, we, we can know that we're declared to be the righteousness of God. We may, we may fail, we may sin, but Lord, you still declare us to be the righteousness of God because you take our sin, you've taken all of our sin, past, present, and future. And when you died on the cross, you took it all and you washed us white as snow or white as wool. Lord, you've declared us to be your children, perfected forever. Lord, even though you're continuing to work in us, we're perfected. And that can bring us peace and joy and, and Lord, hope in a world that's full of chaos and, and Lord, and, and sin. We can trust you. So, Lord, thank you for what you've done, what you do. Thank you for this, this holiday season where we can celebrate the birth that is the beginning of all that you've done. Through the life of Jesus, through his death, his burial, his resurrection. Lord, we know what you've done for us. If you head down, very simple question. Those that are here, maybe those that will be watching on Facebook or YouTube. Do you know Jesus Christ as your Savior? Have you given your life to him? We all are born with a sin problem. The only answer for that sin is Jesus' blood and us giving our life to him. So I'm going to pray a prayer right now. And if you need to pray this prayer and you want to do that and you believe it as you pray it, the scripture says you shall be saved. I want everyone to say with me that will that maybe you pray this in the past. Just say it, pray it with me and those that may be praying for the first time. Say, dear Jesus, Thank you for loving me. I believe you are the Christ, the Son of God. I believe that you died on the cross and that you rose from the dead. Based on that confession, I am saved. My sins are gone and I'm a child of God. Thank you for changing my life. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Would you stand with me right now? <laughs> Lord, I just ask that you touch each one today. Lord, you know what they're going through. You know what they're struggling with. Lord, you know maybe, Lord, what they've, what they've come out of and, Lord, what they're, they're dealing with. Lord, I pray that today, Lord, whatever doubts, whatever fears they may have, that, Lord, that you will remove them, you will take them away as they see themselves as loved by you. Lord, completely and totally loved by you. Lord, I thank you for what you're doing in their lives. I thank you for what you're going to do this week. I thank you for, Lord, how they're going to see themselves completely wrapped up in Jesus. Would you just lift your hand right now? I'll pray a prayer of blessing over you. Lord, I pray right now that you will touch each one today. That, Lord, that you will minister to them. That, Lord, that they will see that they are blessed. Lord, bless them indeed. Lord, I pray that, Lord, as they rise in the morning and they lay down at night, that they are blessed. Lord, as they go through their day, they go through the week, that, Lord, that your blessings Lord, will come upon them, will surround them, will overtake them. The Lord, that as Moses prayed, that, Lord, they will see all of your goodness pass before them. Lord, thank you for what you're going to do in their life and continue to let your blessing overtake them. And in Jesus' name we pray. And everyone says, Amen. 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 Have a great week. Now, listen, I need you to do something. See, Deborah. I was told that there are a couple men that have beards that might want to be Jesus. Joseph. Okay, yeah, Joseph. Joseph. We don't we don't need a Jesus with the beard. Okay, not not for the nativity scene.
No, definitely not for the nativity scene. No, 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 no. Okay, so see Deborah, she needs at least eight to ten. And here's the thing, she can't use the youth or the children or some helpers that are helping with that because they're working with the kids and getting them ready during that time. Okay, we're going to have you outside with spotlights on you. You will be highlighted. We will make sure we get pictures that you can frame if you want to of you as part of the nativity. So please, if you don't can't see Deborah, find me. I'll make sure I tell Deborah that I've got her a, a, a Joseph or I've got her an angel or a wise man or a shepherd or maybe you just want to be a donkey. <laughs> a camel, okay? Maybe you just want to be one. But please see that we need adults who are not going to be in the program. You will be here at the start of the program. Don't you worry about that. We're going to get you in here. we got a special plan for getting you in here. But we need you for the live nativity. So please do that. Thank you for being here today. It's great to see you. And God bless.